Hey there everybody, my name is Ken Drab of the Webcomic Alliance and today we're going to take a look at a feature in Adobe Illustrator that I feel is extremely important at least it is in the development of my comic Rick the Stick and that is layers. I basically use 12 layers and I typically uh, add three more towards the end but that's for when I set up my comic book uh, uh, layout in, in black and white. It'll save me time down the road. I start out with the sketch layer and that uh, can feature something I sketch out right on my Cintiq or um, something I draw freehand and scan it in and place it as a blue line as a reference. Very basic stuff and I keep that on the bottoms and I'll usually just um, turn that layer off when I uh, export. Um, the next layer I use um, is the ink layer and um, that's where I actually ink everything in the foreground um, and that usually is the characters or anything they're holding or interacting with a soda can steering wheel you kinda get the idea just um, more, some more basic stuff uh, it's important for me to keep this layer separate because this will be the main layer for the black and white version as well um, one thing I do here is color in the black and color in the whites since uh, that won't matter with between the black and white or color version so generally for between the black and white and uh, c um, on this layer I'm, I'm just generally using the black and white colors um, the next layer below that is the main color layer and I use that c to color my foreground characters or objects I like to keep this layer separate um, and behind the inking layer because as I pointed out I use the inking layer for black and whites but, but by coloring behind the inking layer I don't have to be precise so it gives me a little freedom to create and the ability to create some shortcuts and this is what it looks like behind and this is what it looks like if I take the uh, the ink layer out so um, that's pretty simple stuff as well um, the layer behind the main color layer is the, is the background ink layer and again I keep the um, I try and keep this pretty simple um, and I keep it separate f um, for the black and white version of the comic in this layer I try to keep um, I try not to distract um, the viewers eyes from what's going on in the foreground but I also want something there that will visually add a sense of depth scenery or even action um, and I've duplicated this layer for in this instance um, to kind of show there's two different um, aspects that I can um, use the layer for um, and one of those is transparency so as you can see here what I've done is I've just set up um, the, the the background images uh, as an outlines but that really doesn't going to do it for me in this instance so I've actually colored in the shapes and by clicking let me just switch the layers here and by clicking on the on the palette um, and going all the way over to the right um, there's a click to target drag to move appearance um, basically if you just click on that it selects everything on that layer and only on that layer which is pretty useful if you have multiple layers and a lot of different stuff going on um, so you click the target and click on the click the target circle on the right hand side um, it's pretty uh, it's pretty like I said it's pretty useful um, and then I can go to the transparency palette and it where it's um, defaults to normal and 100 percent opacity I'll set it to multiply and I like to generally let everything bleed through a little bit so I usually set my opacity at 80 on anything I multiply um, and that's just you know a personal preference um, the great thing about this now that I have this entire um, layer selected is that any even anything I add layer later will um, maintain that that multiply effect and um, the opacity of 80 percent and this is important for sh uh, especially for shading because overlapping shapes of the same color value don't create a darker color where they overlap um, and the next important thing to remember th about this is that if I were to mask this layer in with other layers it loses its transparency effect I don't know why it does that but the multiply reverts to normal um, which is a bummer so I generally will typically mask this layer separately and it keeps the effect on a side note, any layers that, when I come across a situation, any layers that I have in the background behind this, in order to keep that um, layer, tra um, 
layer order, uh, I'll mask them separately as well, which is a little a little more work than I'm than I like to do. Um, so I typically don't run come across this very often. But for instance, this instance, um, I'll uh, I, I wanted to show uh, you know uh, some depth and everything. So um, th that leads me to the the background layer. Okay, and I'll turn that on. You can see. Uh, the background layer is essentially just a um, a gradient uh, with a little moon up top, and you can see just the uh, the um, the shaded area is is um, is set to multiply. And now, as you can see, it it bleeds through, creating kind of like a nice ba um, backyard kind of that in the evening kind of effect. And then I drop in my my characters and and they pop out in the in the foreground. So one of the things um, I like to do and and um, what I'm going to do here is before I mask everything, I'm going to duplicate the three layers that I'll I'll use later, and that's my ink layer, my background ink layer, and my masking layer. And I just go up under the options palette and I hit duplicate selection. Now, by default, it unselects those layers, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But um, what you can also do is highlight them, go back under that options um, in the in the layer palette, and cl and collect a new layer. This essentially just puts it in a new folder, uh, a new layer. But I typically I call it a folder. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll lock it and um, and hide it and drop it in behind all my color layers and I'll come back to this later and use this for the black and white version so I have everything set up as you can see it's there I just have to do some simple masking and boom it's done so that's the uh, the usefulness of, of duplicating and then collecting to layer um, now getting back to masking illustrator takes the topmost uh, object and, and uses that to mask so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the single layers that we're on. So I'm going to go to the background ink layer. Turn off these guys. Okay, and I'm going to select everything. And I've already set up a mask here. It's just this box here. It's basically going to be our mask. You go under object, make a clipping mask, and boom, done. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing Oops, for the background color. And I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut here, so um, that is automated for me. So now you can see it's kind of creating that that effect. Then when I turn on the border, you can see that uh, it doesn't bleed out anymore um, outside of the border. So now when I go back to my, um, I'm going to lock those layers because they're not going to be relevant for the masking anymore. Um, so now I'm going to go to my mask layer, and I'm going to in, um, highlight everything in this panel and I'm gonna create a mask so now you can see it's all nice and tidy and then when I drop my border in over top of that it's uh, it's it's nice and pretty um, now as I uh, as I alluded to um, with the shot with the shading um, the layer I have above the masking layer is the shadows now basically what I'm going to do the same thing I did before I have the shadows already set up I'm going to click on the click the target button it's going to select everything I'm going to drag down uh, transparency to multiply and set it at 80 percent and one of the things I like to do on this layer is I generally won't go outside of the border so I don't have to worry about the, the, the clipping or any masking or any or anything so it's automatically um, pretty much set up so that's a that's a great feature because it gives you the opportunity to give some depth to your uh, to your color. Um, so the next layer I um, that that I have above that is the static border layer um, that doesn't change. So I, I really never really unlock that. And then the layer above that is just what I call legal layer, and that's basically my domain and my copyright information. You can see here copyright 2011 hope that doesn't date this video and then above those two layers I, I have the bubbles and um, basically I, I 
resize and fit accordingly um, and um, generally those don't change now the great thing about that is is that these top four layers don't need to change even if it's color or black and white because I could just drop in the background I mean obviously I have the shading to worry about here but um, you can see that it's already set up so I can go back into uh, um, and, and make it uh, um, black and white pretty easy peasy um, so uh, I hope everybody learned a little bit here and, and look forward to some uh, some more in-depth illustrator techniques in the future thanks again my name is Ken Drab of webcomiclines.com and my comic is Rick the Stick at rickthestick.com thanks <laughs>